In, in this video, I will show you how to work with Vault in a Talent. First of all, what is Vault? Well, it's a secure storage for sensitive data like tokens, passwords, or encryption keys. And it offers a wide range of different tools to access uh, this data and to manage it. If you want more information on this, please go to vaultproject.io. Today, here in this video, I'm going to show you how to use credentials from a Vault secret in talent by using the REST API in a T-REST client component. So if you're interested in this, stay tuned. Uh, here we're already heading over for demo time in talent. First of all, here for the web UI, I sign in with my token. So I get the storage here, which is in this secret storage engine, which can store key value pairs. If I click on that, I can see one secret I already defined just for the demonstration purpose. And if I want to create a new secret, I can just click here on the upper right side, give it a name or even a path. For example, let's say a environment dev, then a customer, let's say Acer, and then a um, description, for example, DB dash and data. Okay, so it does not have to be in just a plain name. And then here I can define the key value pairs and add more and more and more to this. But I did that already and I want a really simple one here, which is this DB data and secret. You can see here the contents in a JSON format. Okay, when you define a new one, by the way, you can also directly go to the JSON format. Let me just put two letters here and then switch to JSON. You can see you can also directly type it out here. Okay, but this is what we're going to use in this uh, secret that I already have. It's called db dash and data, and it's got uh, this information. Now for the endpoints that we're going to use in a talent, uh, they got a nice explorer of their endpoints here integrated in their UI. Uh, you can get there by going to this uh, terminal icon here on the top right of their page, and then just write API here in this box and hit return, and you will get to in this place, let me minimize the terminal again, and which is called a Vault API Explorer. Now for the different categories, you can minimize them by clicking on them and see the corresponding endpoints. The endpoints that we're interested in, or one of them is here in the secrets category, uh, which is uh, the get request for, uh, where was that? A secret slash a data slash, and then the path to the secret itself. And they can already see a short description. If you click on this, you will see more. And now I can also try it out here, which is really good because it gives me all the information that I need in order to be uh, using this in a talent. So I click on uh, try it out. I just type my secret name or my path, which is only the name here and hit execute button. And then I see the corresponding crawl request that's been sent here. The URL for the request and here the uh, response. So the URL, this header information, and then the response to in order to parse it, we're going to use in this in a talent. So for the response, it's good to hit download here and download this to your local machine. And with this, we can head over to talent and look at the job we're going to build. First of all, before we start processing data from the database and showing some things on the console. We're actually going to read the database information here from Vault. You can see these things come from Global Map, which is done with the, this flow to iterate component here. But before we are actually doing the REST call for the API that Vault provides with the corresponding URL that you've just seen in the web, plus the extra header here, and then we're extracting the information we need. You can see these five fields in order to be able to use them here to connect to a database. Okay, and then we're doing some logging and some disconnect at the end in order to have it complete. And this is what we're going to build together now. So I create a new job. Let me just close this one. And copy in the name from here. And here on use cases, I right click, create a new job design. It's going to be a unique name, so I added two at the end. And now let's start again with this uh, pre-job component. 
the REST client and for the moment just a log row. Okay, so uh, what are we going to do? Well, here the trigger on component OK from pre-job goes to TREST client and the TREST client now needs the URL to uh, open, which is in this one here. So I can copy the request URL from the web and just paste it here inside these double quotes. I want to get in JSON. So I select JSON as an accept type here. The schemas are fine so far, but for the advanced settings, we should do two things. Uh, in my case, I don't want uh, XML uh, return uh, XML response. So I uncheck in the box convert response to DOM object and I add a new HTTP header, which is the one I've already shown you here also on the web. So I copy in this value here, x dash vault dot token. Okay, sorry, x vault token and then the token itself. And always in talent, I paste it inside in these double quotes in case you're using the values directly or in other cases, obviously, you would be using uh, context variables or other variables. Okay, and then the response, I can connect here directly to this logro component, and then I copy and paste this component, control C, control V, uh, to get the other output here, which is row error, uh, to this second logo component. And here I sync columns, and I'm ready to run this the first time. We can already see this works, okay? So it's finding this secret and giving uh, all this adjacent information here, just like we've seen in the web in this third column, right? Because it's actually one row with three columns and we already downloaded the file. So we can take this file that I already have locally uh, to download uh, to extract the ex corresponding information from this piece here in our JSON. So how to do that here in metadata, in the repository, go to file JSON, right click, create a JSON schema, and let's call that vault uh, response. Like this, and then go to next. Uh, input to JSON is okay here because we're reading this JSON file. Now select a file, which is in my downloads folder. I don't see it because here per default, asterisk.json is selected. So select one of the other ones. And then here, pick up your file, click open, and here we already see the structure. Let me notch this a little bit. And here in data, we can see our five fields of interest for this scenario, right? So respectively for the loop, we take the level above those five fields and then up in these fields, the database to username. And we can hit refresh preview once, and this is done and we see the information that will be extracted here. Uh, for the schema, I've got a really, really simple password. I should change this back to a string in order to avoid another extra conversion and then hit finish. So now here, the response, I delete the response output, move this logo over, and now I take this uh, JSON definition vault response here from my repository, drag and drop that into my job and convert it to extract in JSON fields. Okay, move that a bit in the middle here. The response now goes there. I don't want to get the target schemas component, target components schema, so I hit no here. And then here, just for the output, I just use row main and that's it. And then one more thing here, I got to sync columns because this logger component now obviously receives a different schema, which are five columns, right? And here for the at the extract and JSON fields component, we get to pay attention to which one is the JSON field. As you might remember here from this output, it's the last column here actually uh, from the three and that we get. So we can have a look here and component, we have status code, body and string. So it's in string, save this job, control S and execute it F6 on my keyboard. And there it is, we have the corresponding information. Right now, in order to be able to use this in DB connection component, we should somehow some easy way get it to global map. So we can use tflow to iterate component for this and just 
change the connection to this one and basically eliminate uh, this log row component. Okay, and here to make it even easier than to um, know where we use it and how we use it and what it should be named, I rename this input here to DB because then when we use it, the actual variables in global map will be called DB dot and then the column name for each uh, corresponding field here. And for this output, I don't want a logger output anymore, but I just rather want a TDI. Okay, because I, if I can, for example, find a, the secret in Vault, I would not even want to proceed to a database connection. So I, I change it like this. I connect the reject flow and the arrow flow uh, to a TDI component. And also for the TDI component, in order to have some meaningful information, uh, I would write a, a fixed string here, for example, Vault error and then uh, concatenate and the uh, error message okay how can i do that also here the input name uh, for example row two dot and then uh, the field error message i can use for the uh, die message okay so let me just type uh, this one and then i can copy in this one but just replace it here with this for and instead of message i read code okay and then i would have the respective information and this type of information you would usually log to some place be it a log file a database a gray log or whatever then here what you would want to do is you would use the corresponding uh, catcher component which is a log catcher okay and for our case and just let's log that again to the uh, console to make it simple for the demo purpose Okay, and you can see here, you can select a subset, but it should be at least a T die because you have one T die now in our uh, process, but I prefer to leave the other two selected as well. Now we have the DB uh, connection component. Okay, we can either uh, add it here and then configure it, or if you have a database connection already, like I do, you can take it from the repository, drag and drop that into your job, and convert it to, in my case, T MySQL connection or T whatever database you have connection component. And now here I've got it and I got to change the values now for host, database, username, port and password. So I click into one of these fields. It's automatically asking me if I want to update repository information or change to build in, which is meaning only changing in this job in this component. I change it to build in property, hit OK. And now here uh, I will uh, retrieve the information that I have here and now in global map through this flow to iterate component. Uh, how to do that? Well, you can just type parts of the name, for example, the beginning T flow, and then hit control space. And here you can already see the different fields, which is host for this field. Again, here T flow control space. And then we have the where is it, a database. Uh, t uh, the username the port and, and for the last one here for the password i just click to click first on this three dot button because as long as it's showing this asterisk here it's not writable delete everything from this field here where i should enter a new password and also here just t flow and then select the Tivolo iterate one dot password and it's converted into this piece of code um, this fragment that we need to get the corresponding information. Now in the next step for simulation of some real processing, I'm just reading a small set of my actor table that I already have here. So I can, for example, say uh, drag and drop this into my job, convert it into DB input component. Now here I say I use an existing connection, select which one to use and for example, limit down the query result a little bit by uh, only getting a subset of the data. I will add a where condition. For example, actor first name, I only want to see uh, Julia. Okay. All right. And then, for example, this goes to the console, this database result. 
So it's a real main connection here between the DB input and the logo component. And then this one obviously should be ready and finished without errors before we start in this sub job here. So right click trigger on sub job okay from this one to this one. And last but not least, we will add this post and job component, which is this one here and a DB a close component on this. And the only thing here we have to do, select the corresponding database type, again, MySQL in my case, and the component, and only left there the trigger on component OK from a post job to DB close. Maybe I can move that up a little bit. So we've just got this stuff uh, closer and can see that better. And well, now I'm ready to execute my job again. I go to the run tab, hit the run button, and I can execute this. Here we can see now we're getting the information from Vault, uh, establishing the database connection with the extracted data there, and then doing whatever we have to do in our actual ETL process and then closing the database connection again. And in this case, as you can see here, there was no TDI, no TWARN message, and no uh, job exception. Uh, this one would not write anything to the console. But most importantly, here we have seen uh, how to invoke and with which header and the REST API for Vault in order to be able uh, to get a uh, sensitive information in our talent jobs. Uh, also, if you wonder uh, how do others get sensitive information in your talent jobs? I would also like to know. So please comment below. Uh, like I said, give it a thumbs up if you like the video. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to learn more, please go to bit.ly slash talent dash data dash en where you find my comprehensive talent course. Thank you very much for your attention. See you soon.